A union that looks at the big picture of the world that fights for justice for everyone. A union that will help me provide for my family in the future. A union that takes politics seriously. A union that gives me skills so I can help my co-workers. A union that knows no boundaries and inspires everybody for a better future. The union that makes sure our rights are not violated. The union that fights for all drivers to have equal pay and equal benefits. A union that hears you when you call and moves heaven and earth to help you. That's exactly what we've been doing since we gathered at our convention in San Diego, working to make a more perfect union. ATU has been out on the front lines of the struggle for better working conditions for our members, all workers, and the fight for justice in every corner of the United States and Canada. The union has grown by almost 3,000 members in the last three years. From Richmond, Virginia, to Aspen, Colorado, to Toronto, Ontario, to Fresno, California, and many other communities, we have organized workers. We've taken on campaigns to protect pensions in California and Michigan. We've led the fight against privatization of transit and to preserve and increase funding for transit systems in cities across our nations. We've stood side by side with political allies to build a progressive agenda. And sometimes we go to Washington to join with allies to push for transit funding. All across the United States, our locals are working to get our passengers to call district offices of members of Congress and the Senate and to deliver the same message that we will as we walk through these halls. There are millions of Americans who rely on what you do every day. Sometimes it means engaging the public in one-on-one -on -one organizing. Great. So what we're asking the writing public is to contact their legislator to tell them, okay, um, prices, costs seem to be going up, and fares too. Our political mobilization played a key role in passing a federal bill hiking bus funding by 90% and adding $2 billion to a paratransit system. Our Canadian members now have a stronger national voice in Canada with the creation of ATU Canada. We've also built our internal capacity with our Joint Industry and Service Councils and the state-of-the-art Tommy Douglas Conference Center. We're taking on private multinational transit companies like First Transit and MV, but also forging new campaigns to organize new employers like Uber and Lyft. We've just announced that 15,000 Uber drivers in New York City have expressed their desire to join our union. While we are organizing new members, we have our eye firmly on the rights of our current members. We remember Jake Schwab, who is a tragic symbol of our determination to have public workers covered by a state safety law in Pennsylvania. Jake Schwab died as a result of uh, no OSHA standards within the public sector. The bus had a, a part let loose on Jake. A few days later, he passed away from those injuries. After the accident, all I could think about was that no one should have to go through the pain his family and I went through. It wasn't supposed to happen, and not that way. We've secured legislation in both the U.S. and Canada that helps protect transit workers from assaults, because an assault on one member is an assault on every member. A man came up from behind me and put a scarf around my neck and tightened it, choking me, and tried to pull me out of the seat. The assailant had me around the head, and it felt like he was twisting my head off. And so I heard someone say, hey, driver. And when I turned around, he spit right in my face. I mean, it was horrible. He kicked me on the back of the head again, and I fell forward, collapsed up against the front door of the bus and the front of the bus. And after that, really, all I can recall is uh, ending up in the shelter. And then he told me, just drive. Find a quiet place so I can kill you. We're going to make sure that every ATU member gets the basic rights that every worker enjoys on their job. Bus drivers should have the right to have reasonable bathroom breaks. All we're asking for is paid time like every other citizen gets to get up and go to the bathroom um, at a clean and safe facility. And to feel confident that the bus they drive won't put the public in harm's way because of poor design. As this pedestrian walks up to the intersection, they're being tracked by that blind spot. And then as they cross, they're again tracked by the blind spot. 
the gentleman that I didn't see because he was behind the column probably thought I had stopped for him. So he started to walk and then I started to turn. Suddenly, his head was like right behind my mirror. I saw gray hair and bump and I mean, I stopped immediately, but he fell on the sidewalk next to the bus. We're also building coalitions and alliances with our riders to fight for more and improved public transit through stronger campaigns. Amalgamated Transit Union Local 713 held a town hall meeting today at the Gaston Community Center in South Memphis. Members of the Memphis Bus Riders Union were also there to discuss how routes can be restored to low-income residents in North and South Memphis. ATU joined with Clayton County residents and community allies to wage a successful grassroots campaign, urging citizens to vote to expand MARTA bus service to Clayton County. Voters passed the initiative by a landslide of 73 to 27. Atlanta is also a battleground to push back against the privatization of MARTA. Our community alliance took our fight into the political arena and exposed the greed of MARTA's rich CEO. In St. Louis, we won the first wage increase in six years and preserved our pension while also fighting race baiting by management. In Buffalo, we've teamed up with community allies in a coordinated campaign for improved service and better wages for our members. Saskatoon members, backed by a big community alliance, are fighting for a fair contract with a secure pension after working without a contract for more than four years. We are also in the thick of the battle for the rights of our school bus workers, including continuing to wage a three-year battle to preserve long-standing job protections for our New York City school bus drivers and matrons. ATU is also on the front lines of the climate change battle. We are better prepared to fight for stronger contracts and stop the outsourcing of our members' jobs through our coordinated community campaigns. Using the Joint Industry Council, the JIC, we took on First Transit at the Washington, D.C. Circulator Bus Property. These large multinational companies, they have a 20-year plan, 10-year plan, 15-year plan, 5-year plan. And we have, generally speaking, a 3-year plan to get a contract for 3 years. And no idea what we're going to do after the 3 years. And to think like they think, we have to know what they're doing. And that was one of the goals of the JIC. A critical component of new ATU campaigns is to involve community allies. When the church partnered with the labor union, in this instance um, ATU, that formed a power that the local politician could not walk away from and not become responsive to we were going to seek to have this multinational lose the contract if they weren't going to pay the drivers a comparable wage. Because of that campaign, we won a great contract thanks to a coordinated campaign with riders, clergy, and community allies. The work we did on the circulator was a template for what we need to do in the future with these negotiations with these multinational companies. We ramped up skills training for local leaders and members. This included new training classes such as collective bargaining, new officers, public engagement, pension trustee, grievance and arbitration, advanced arbitration, contract preparation, and Friedrichs training. Since the conclusion of our convention, over 6,000 members have been trained across the U.S. and Canada. We opened the Tommy Douglas Conference Center, a 47-acre campus complete with room accommodations and meeting space, where dozens of trainings for ATU members have been held. We're also very aware that great threats confront us at work because our members are the targets of right-wing politicians and global corporations. It's the official policy of the Republican Party to defund transit in the U.S. And it's the official policy of Canada's Conservative Party to make it harder to join unions. The shadowy, power-drunk billionaire Koch brothers are underwriting campaigns and politicians who want to destroy our basic social safety net. They want to privatize Medicare and Social Security 
and they're cashing in on energy resources in Canada. Politicians like Governor Chris Christie are handing over our retirement money to their Wall Street cronies. And too often, they have some Democrats helping them out. It's an all love relationship for yeah. me. We have a 2% property tax cap because of Steve Sweeney and me. We have a limitation on what public sector workers can get in terms of raises and interest arbitration at 2% because of Steve Sweeney. We, we have public sector workers finally paying for a portion of their health benefits because of what I've done with Steve Sweeney. We have no cost of living adjustments for retirees on pensions anymore because of what I've done with Steve Sweeney. We have bigger penalties for early retirement. We have public workers paying more for their pensions because of what I've done with Steve Sweeney. We have been very good partners. They are pushing for new picks to the U.S. Supreme Court who will kill unions and let the greedy pocket even more money. What has their greed done to our countries? Today, the typical male worker made 783 U.S. dollars less last year than he did 42 years ago, after adjusting for inflation. The typical female worker is making $1,337 less than she did in 2007. Over the last two years, the wealthiest 15 people in the United States alone, 15 people, have seen their wealth go up $170 billion. That's billion, with a B, and that's over what they already owned. That's more wealth than is owned by the bottom 40% of U.S. residents. This has been Robin Hood in reverse. We've been the victims of a 40-year crime wave. It's wrong, it's unacceptable, and it's not what the economy should be about. To bring economic fairness back into the economy, the ATU has mobilized our members and engaged our riders. Across the country, we are mobilizing politically to support ballot initiatives, which increase funding for current transit systems and raise more money for new transit projects. We take on important national issues that affect society, including our strong opposition to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which threatens everyone's standard of living. In local and national elections in the U.S. and Canada, we've supported progressives like Jamie Raskin and Chewy Garcia. But today, the rest of us have something to say. The bus drivers, the train operators, the police officers, the emergency responders. ATU members in Canada supported NDP and Liberal candidates and encouraged riders to vote for transit-friendly candidates. In the presidential primaries, we backed Bernie Sanders to advance a progressive vision for the country. And we produced by far the most progressive platform in the history of the Democratic Party. ATU was proud to stand with leaders in the labor movement supporting the candidacy of Bernie Sanders, who stood for everything that the labor movement stands for and has always supported us, not just in word, but in deed. We look forward proudly to working for the next four weeks to help elect Senator Clinton as President of the United States. When we built the American middle class, it came out of the American labor movement. Unions provided the ability to bargain with powerful economic interests. Our members do more than their jobs. They perform heroic acts every day. They're psychologists, first responders, and sometimes babysitters. Just recently, they protected a 15-year-old girl who a man was attempting to abduct. They came to the rescue of a woman who had been assaulted. They've stood up against racially hostile attacks. They've returned passengers lost personal property and helped a passenger whose wheelchair was stuck on a curb. We salute them all. We gather in Toronto to make decisions about the next three years and beyond. Our members and their families and the people in our communities look to the ATU for leadership as we continue our drive for justice. Are you ready? 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 Are you ready?